All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, get set up on activity 232. So this is just a setup video, um, which covers a couple of different calculations that you do, in fact, need to do for it. Uh, all right, so our formulas are all there, which is really nice. Uh, and I'm going to walk you guys through steel. So I had a dog bone of steel, uh, and the first thing I did was I measured uh, the dimension from there to there at several dis different places on my dog bone. And these are, uh, with dial calipers, the dimensions that I got in inches, okay? Uh, so the smallest one is going to be the most important uh, diameter for me to use uh, to calculate area. Um, on the next page, uh, it says the smallest one, which I said is important. We'll use that to calculate area. Uh, I put two dots onto my dog bone. And I measured the distance. That's my original length. So that's your L0. This is your diameter. Um, position it uh, and test it. So I put it into a tensile tester and pulled it apart. And, uh, you should have seen a bunch of videos last week on that. Um, so now, uh, after I've pulled it apart, I again measured the distance between the two dots. So you'll notice it was 0.4785 inches and now it's 0.5265 inches so you can see that there is some deformation that's occurred and the deformation is going to be the original length uh i'm sorry it's going to be the length after you broke it minus the original length right so the broken length uh, minus the original length so 0.5265 inches minus four seven eight five inches and since we're there i'm going to just go ahead and uh hopefully grab my calculator and there it is i guess one of my kids was playing with it and we'll get the original length so 0.5265 minus uh, 0.4785 i'm sorry the deformation length or the amount of stretch so the deformation is zero point 0.048 inches. Let me just circle that there. And while we're at it, let's calculate area. So up here, area is equal to the uh, diameter squared divided by 4 times pi. So 0 0.0925 squared times 4. Sorry, oops. Uh, that was wrong. Uh, divided by 4 times 3.14, I'm just going to use 3.14 for pi. So area, we got 0 0.00671665636 inches squared. And uh, because I'm going to use that a lot, I'm going to actually uh, use my store key, which is this one down here. And I'm going to store that as uh, alpha... A. So the answer I'm going to store is A for area because I'm going to use it a lot. It's a lot of numbers to type in, so this way I don't have to. All right. Uh, so strain, deformation divided by original length. We just told you what the deformation was, so that's very simple. It's uh, 0 0.048 divided by uh, 0 0.4785, and we've got our strain. And that is 0 0.1003134796. And you might say inches per inch or no unit. It really doesn't have a unit, but we like to keep inches per inch. Just, just to remind us that for every inch of the object, it's going to stretch 0 0.1 inches uh, before it breaks. Uh, percent elongation is the strain times 100. So we would call that... 10.03% elongation, just multiplying the strain by 100. Reduction in area, original area uh, minus the final area, right? Final diameter is from this guy here, right? Because it necked right here. So this diameter final is that value there. And so we need to find area with that. 
So 0 0.0560 squared divided by 4 times pi. So our area final there, and this is just so that we can find 0 0.056, the reduction in area squared divided by 4 times 3.14. And I got the area here, and this is the final area. We don't really use this one much just to find how much it reduced in area. 00246176 inches squared. So the original minus the final. So I'm gonna do uh, 0 0.00671665563 inches squared minus 0 0.00246176 inches squared. Divided by the original 0 0.00671-66563 inches squared times 100. And the nice thing here is that uh, that 0 0.0246 is my answer right now. So I can actually do alpha A because I stored it as A, right? The area original uh, minus the answer. Enter. Divide by alpha A, and then multiply by 100. So the reduction in area is 63.348% reduction in area. Oops, you guys can barely see that, sorry. Uh, so it did reduce, it reduced by 63%, which is actually quite a bit. Uh, hopefully I didn't make a mistake. No, I think we're pretty good. All right. It says to do a print screen of your completed test, tensile test and insert the graph into the calculation tables. I already did that for you guys. Um, <clears throat> so the first one says to find the proportional limit stress. Uh, and on these, I went ahead and put the dots for you guys. On yours, you're going to have to. But just remember, proportional limits to straight lines. So the end of the straight line is the proportional limit. Just up and to the right of that is our yield point. Our elastic limit is in there as well, but I'm not going to ask you to do that one. The topmost point is your ultimate point, and that's where you're going to have your maximum force. So they actually gave you the exact number there. And then the last thing is your breaking point, right before it drops straight down. That's your breaking point right there. So for this one, they asked me to calculate... Uh, where, or find out where the proportional limit is, which I've already done. It looks like it's just above 700. And they said to calculate it. So the stress at the yield point is going to be equal to the uh, force at the yield point divided by the area uh, of the original uh, cross-sectional area, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and say that this proportional limit, if I walk it across, it's about 705 pounds of force. And I just got that from looking at this graph and estimating about where it is over here. So I'm saying that that's about 705 pounds of force. All right. So now all I got to do is 705 divided by 0 0.00. Oh, got to go back. 00671. Six seven one six 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 seven one six six five six three, and that gives me. And now, the nice thing is in my calculator, I can just do seven hundred and five divided by second A because I stored it in there. Uh, Ten hundred and four thousand. Sorry, one hundred and four thousand nine hundred sixty-two point nine four one nine. Uh, pounds per inch squared. Now, sig figs would obviously change things up a little bit, but um, we'll just stick with that for now. I don't want to confuse you. All right, I'll do some videos of the other ones as well. Thanks for watching. Uh, and uh, if you have questions or you're getting problems wrong, uh, make sure you please, please, please send me an email. I want to help. All right.